Whoa. The faucet. Oh my gosh. What? Oh, we're live? Oh, crap. Oh, hey, everybody. How are you? Colin, uh, the host of Designer Spotlight here in the 2020 Design Power Users Group. Uh, we have a great guest today, but before I introduce her, I'm going to bring, uh, bring Karen in, my co-host. Karen. There you are. Hey, hey Colin, how are you doing today? Ah, just, just peachy. How about yourself? Great. I'm, I'm excited for another designer's spotlight. Um, so we've uh, been talking with, uh, with Becky, Becky Olkowski. And um, she is a um, very interesting young lady. She has a very interesting business. Uh, so I'm going to start with just a little bio. Um, so she lives in Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. I did it. Yay. With her fiance and five cats. Uh, she's been artistic her whole entire life. And since she could draw at a very young age, she absolutely loves to use her artistic talents and creativity to redesign kitchens and baths. And she loves to travel and she's ziplined. I just lost my... She ziplined in the Colorado Rocky Mountains in 2017. So without any further ado, here's Becky. Hiya, Becky. Hi. Hey, Becky. Uh, it's good to be in this group. Nice to see you both and see good. everyone. <laughs> <laughs> good to see you too. Thank you for, uh, for being here uh, for our second installment of hopefully what will be many of the designers uh, spotlight. So um, beyond the biography that I just uh, that I just just told everybody, can you give us a little bit more of an idea of your background and your experience? Um, well, I have about uh, ten years in the design industry uh, total, and one and a half years in uh, construction um, with a construction firm. Um, so I, I knew that interior design or interior design related field was definitely for me, uh, being so artistic at a young age. Um, other than that, um, just some interesting facts. I have five cats. I don't know if you mentioned that already. I, I, did I was okay. brought in a little later. You can name them if you want. Yeah, I'll name them. Yeah. Um, give them a shout out. First one, uh, <laughs> Layla with at Layla and Jordy. Jordy actually passed away recently, oh, but sorry. we're doing okay. We still have five. <laughs> okay, so um, they're from the same litter and we didn't want to take just one. So we took both. Um, and then we got Ollie. At first we were like, no, not three cats, not three. Um, but we saw him and we fell in love with him and we took him home and he's been in our family ever since. And then after having three and then Jordy passing away, um, wait, I'm getting, <laughs> getting the story confused. So we had three and then we got two more again from the same litter. And that was it. We had five and we were at our maximum and that's it. And then Jordy passed away um, back in August. Mm. Um, and so then we had four and then, um, so the other two, uh, there, um, we named them shadow and stormy, uh, shadow likes to hide. So she's in the shadows. That's how we got that name. And then stormy is a little fireball. And so we just came up with stormy. Um, um, and then the, when Jordy passed, we had four. And so we got a fifth one again, not really by choice. Uh, it's kind of by a uh, neighbor couldn't take care of it anymore. So we brought it in. Mm. And so nice. now we have five again. That was a really long story. That's okay. That's <laughs> I okay. could probably talk longer about my cats. <laughs> yeah, we could talk for about maybe an hour about my cats too. My four. So you got me beaten by one. <laughs> Oh wow! I didn't. I didn't even know you had any cats. Mm -hmm. That's great. I have four. I have four. Lots cats of cats. Yeah. No more dogs. Had two dogs, but that's a, that's another story. Um, so, how did you get your start in the industry? Well, my. I guess I could talk about my first job after yeah. WCTC, the tech school I went to. Um, I worked at a tile place for about one and a half years, or like one one and a half years. Um, and they brought on 
uh, uh, they hired uh, temp agency workers. Mm. Uh, so then they let me go. So I was replaced. Uh, that was my first job. I learned a lot about tile in that job. And um, it, was, it was sad that when, I, when they let me go, but I learned a lot and I took a lot from that experience. And then I was uh, in furniture sales for a while after that. Okay. Um, and when did you start, when did you start doing kitchens and baths and using 2020? Uh, after I, uh, or right before I got hired at the construction firm, I, um, I knew the construction firm used 2020. So I wanted mm. to learn the software. And so I impressed, uh, my future boss, uh, with a kitchen design and I presented that to him. And he brought me in for a second interview and pretty much hired me on the spot. Nice. He said he was really impressed with my renderings and wanted to bring me on board um, for this company. And I've loved using 2020 ever since and designing kitchens ever since. Nice. So, yeah. Awesome. All right. So what brought you to your, your current, your current um, business, which is very, very interesting. Well, I'll probably go into depth with that in the slides yeah. in my presentation. Uh, I don't know. Are we, um, I could briefly can, answer this now. No, yeah, if you want, you can start with your, you can start your presentation. I have screen sharing sure. turned on, so you should be able to go ahead and, and share your screen whenever you're ready. Yeah. I put a timeline, a brief timeline together oh, that kind of okay. goes over the whole Excellent. reason I started my business. So I, I'm going to bring that up. Super. So right now it should be just an orange screen, but I'll go to the slide. Uh, don't see, oh, don't see not yet. yet. Yep, there you go. There it comes. Okay. Um, just seeing it. Just seeing your desktop background. Yep. Okay. Do you see and, the orange screen? Yeah. Now? Yes. There we go. Got it. Yep. Okay. So I'm gonna kind of skip ahead to the timeline. We kind of went over my background a little bit. <laughs> I am from Wisconsin. You don't have a very okay. thick accent, just so you know. <laughs> what? You don't have a very thick accent, just so you know. Oh, are it's you not, saying that sarcastically? That no, I, no, no, I mean that. It's I mean that, that time sincerely. of year. No, it me, I mean that sincerely. You really don't don't have a very thick accent. Wow. Um, <laughs> unless it's unless it's I've really never heard that. On most people. <laughs> They hear from some someone's from Wisconsin. They immediately say, "You, yeah. you might, you probably have a really thick accent from there." <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you're you're in the where are you at, Colin? New Hampshire, Connecticut? I can't. New Hampshire. <laughs> New Hampshire. So I yeah, lived in New Wisconsin. Exactly the same thing. <laughs> yeah. So I lived in Wisconsin for 15 years. So oh, yeah. you know, and uh, now I'm in Pennsylvania. So everybody thinks I have an accent. <laughs> Yeah, but I grew up outside of Boston, and I I was fortunate enough to not to not take on the uh, Boston accent. Not that it's a bad thing, but it's one of the most one of the one of the most inaccurately reproduced accents. <clears throat> in oh, movies. yeah. But anyway, Becky, back to you. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. I was just also going to add the weather here. Just we got our first freeze last night. Oh. Um, so I got one of those cold. Yeah. Your um your you your voice just went a little bit your volume uh -huh. went down on your microphone somehow just in this last oh. about two seconds ago yeah can you hear me barely barely yeah, it's not One, it's not two, very loud see if you can pull your sound up a little bit yeah you didn't do anything different I don't think it's on our end Uh, let's see, maybe where the microphone is. If you didn't touch Testing. the. One, two, three. Yeah, it's very quiet. Yeah. Hmm. That's weird. I wonder why your microphone volume would have gone so low all of a sudden. Where would you, where would she find that? Can you hear me at all? A um, little bit. Very, yes, yeah, very, it's, it's, very, um, that's very... okay. We have the strain to hear you. But, so if you go down to the little microphone in the lower left if, as you hover down the lower left of the screen um actually no you're sharing so it's up at the top i think well you know what we'll we'll try and we'll try and get by and i'll i'll uh see if i can 
boost the audio in post-production or something. Yeah, see if you can just talk a little bit louder. Yeah. Yeah, um, can you hear me better now? A little bit, yeah. Okay. Or I don't know if it's maybe the AirPods picking up because I had AirPod issues before. No, it could be. It could be. It's yeah, because you were you if if uh, yeah, because it changed substantially. Yeah, it just went down. Sorry, folks, we're having technical difficulties. Please stand by. <laughs> okay, test, talk into your pattern. microphone. Tech, talk into your microphone now. Can you hear me now? It's still about the same. So, are you using yeah. AirPods? Is that what you're using for a microphone? I. Yeah, I was, and then I had issues with them, and then I used this instead. And what are you using now for your microphone? She's using uh, a microphone. Which is it a Yeti? Setup. I'm getting my fiance to help out. Oh, He's there you go. It just, very there you just happened. go. Happened. He's here to save the day. Once you introduce him. I don't him know if we'll he's... fix it, but <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah. Try. That, it fixed it, it. It actually went. Yeah, it actually went. I wonder if it's a physical connection. Maybe it could be the wiring. They can. But hear it's me better too. now. It's yeah, it went up. Something something went went. Cord tucked under here, and it was pulling on it. Oh, he just told me the cord was tucked between <laughs> ah. the computer. Weird. Okay. Okay, there, I think better. we Yay. fixed it. Yeah, right. Yay. Yay. We're, you're back. back okay. Track. Okay. All right. Can you see the screen? Yes. Okay. So, kind of about the timeline of events that led out to me starting this business. So I went to KBiz back in January. Um, it was my first KBiz experience. It was super awesome. I had such a great time. I learned so much. I saw so much. Um, it's unfortunate that um, they have that um, virtually this year instead of in person. So I'm looking forward uh, to the next in-person KBiz, um, but I will be going to the vir all virtual one this year because it's definitely worth at least being there even if it's just virtual. Um, and then COVID hit shortly after. Um, and then we all know how crazy the world kind of got with that. Mm -hmm. um, I was able to work from home uh, with the construction company I worked for. Um, construction was deemed essential, so they were still in business and we still were working on projects. Um, but most of the work that I did, I was able to do from home. Um, and so then April and May, um, the safer at home order ends in Wisconsin, uh, businesses start reopening. Um, they wanted me to come back to the office, um, but I, I realized that I, I didn't, I worked better when I worked at home. I, I um, was more efficient and I was kind of scared. I have asthma, really bad asthma. And I, I realized, you know, this was a risk that I was going to take. Either I was going to take it now in my life or I was never going to take it at all. So mm -hmm. uh, other than awesome. that, I, I kind of skipped the line where I also became engaged. You can see me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so a lot has happened. I was like, okay, should I start a business? Oh my gosh, I'm engaged, wow. <laughs> so um, I didn't really know how I was gonna start this business. I just knew that I wanted to. So I opened the LLC in June. I bought the 2020 Design Live software mm -hmm. and I became a KAB and KBA member. I, I try to go to all the, the virtual classes. If they're in person, I try to go to those. Um, so I, I get a lot out of the NKBA. It's a great group to be in. Um, and I designed my own kitchen because I was stuck at home so much. I don't have the greatest kitchen. And I'm like, hey, I have this design software. I should design my own kitchen. So that's what I did. And so that, that process kind of led me to think that if I can design my own kitchen, keeping mechanicals where they are and just give it a refresh, I can do that for other kitchens. Um, so it's sort of like a practice for my, my business process. Um, I also created my website. And then in that process, I formulated my business plan. Then um, August, September rolls around. I 
tested my business process with two clients and I ordered my business cards and I started making business relations. Um, there were some showrooms that I worked at before or not worked at before, but um, were kind of partners when I worked at the construction company and uh, before then. Um, so I reintroduced myself and I said that I'm starting my own business and um, would I be able to work with you? Would I you know, be able to use your showroom to bring in my clients? And um, a lot of people that I talked to were really excited for me. So it kind of gave me that little boost of confidence that this was something I really needed to go after. And all, all the encouragement that I got from other people has been a tremendous help. And it's been just kind of that reassurance that this is definitely the right path to take. Um, and so now we're in October. Um, both, both projects that I worked on were successful. Yay. And um, I am currently strengthening my social presence. Um, I'm on you know, all the social networks pretty much that you can name. Um, and I plan on taking your class, Colin, Yay. um, some, sometime soon, uh, don't know when yet, but I will be taking that soon. And then, um, I just want to grow, improve and move forward. You know, one of the things that I learned with being home during the age of COVID that we're in is you can learn anything. You got a lot mm -hmm. of time, hopefully. I, I know a lot of people have a lot of time, um, on my downtime, I will sit on my couch with my smart TV and I'll go on YouTube and I will just search for anything I want to learn and I will learn it on my downtime. <laughs> I kind of count it as work time, but, you know, I, I always strive to learn and improve. And I think that's really going to uh, be successful or have me be successful in this business is just always want to improve and innovate. I don't want to, you know, stay behind in the times and just let other people just kind of take all the ideas um, or not take all the ideas. I don't know how I'm trying to word this, but um, I feel like if you don't always strive to improve your business mm -hmm. or yourself, um, it's not, it's going to show. And I think that, I hope that um, this uh, interview and me saying this, that it encourages you to just always try to learn something new, at least once a week. And so that's how I found um, the Pug Group um, on YouTube. I was searching how to get better with 2020 design, and I found Colin's Pug Group. I hope I say that right. The 2020 Pug Group? Yeah. it's, Is that what it's yeah. You know, it's... it's yeah. Uh, it came from just just a quick aside. It came from um, so it started out as just the 2020 Design Power Users Group, and then I think it was um, I think it was my friend Mary Chabot said um, said Hey Pug P U G Pug. I'm like that's super cool. So I just kind of <laughs> I just kind of jumped on it, and it's we've been pugs ever since. So anyway, it's a very unique name. <laughs> So that, that kind of is the timeline of events, um, you know, that what led me to starting my own business. Um, you know, it's, it wasn't just that um, I was scared to go to work um, when they asked me to go back to the office. It was also, I always wanted to work for myself. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things when I worked at this construction company, I felt like a lot of my ideas and my potential was kind of held back. Um, you can get really advanced with 2020 with some of the capabilities 2020 allows. Um, with that, those capabilities, sometimes it takes more time. And the construction company didn't really want me to spend so much time on the renderings or making mood boards or meeting a client in the showroom. Um, there's just a few things that I guess how they ran their business wasn't really aligning with how I would run my own. And so that's another reassurance there is like, I really wanted to reach my full potential and, um, you know, show the world all my, you know, my gifts and talents in, in my own unique way. So 
this is a way that I could do that. Um, I have some other slides in this presentation that. Um, oh, I wanted to talk a little bit. Can I interrupt? Yeah. About when you spoke Definitely. about staying home with COVID, I think it's changed so much for kitchen and bath designers and interior designers too, that we found, I don't know if you've seen Colin and you Becky, that we found that, you know, we can Zoom with our clients. We really don't have to go to the house. And like you with asthma, I have asthma too. And being in the construction industry is a very difficult challenge because really we're is. walking into houses where there's huge amounts of wood dust and things that you know I'm allergic to. So I think what it's been able to do for a lot of designers is give them that little brief spurt now where they've had time where they were away from say a company and they can make that decision. Do I prefer to try to go out on my own? So I think that a lot of designers are facing that right now. And I don't know, what do you think, Colin? Yeah, I think that it's, uh, you know, it's, it, things are, things are going to change just in general, things are going to change because, um, you know, people are realizing, I mean, Becky, to what you said, I mean, people sometimes don't realize this about their employer or their situation until they're 20 or 30 years into it. So yeah. I think that, you know, you're, you know, I didn't, I didn't until I was, you know, I, I owned a business for a little while back in, you know, mid 2000s. But, um, you know, that I wasn't, I wasn't a business owner. So it wasn't, it didn't really work out the way I would have liked it to. And then of course, 2008 happened. And that's, you know, that's all together. The recession. But uh, yeah, so yeah. with the, um, you know, people, it, it's just great that you realize that, that you're, belief system, your, the way that you would do business doesn't align, didn't align with the company. And, uh -huh. you know, and it's, it sounds like they just wanted you to sell. They just wanted to sell uh -huh. products. Yeah. You know, they just wanted to sell and move on to the next one. And that's great. That's their business model, but that's not the business model that, that you wanted. You wanted to be able to spend yeah. it. I'm exactly like you. I don't, you know, I don't like, as a result, I'm not, I'm not a huge, I'm not a huge, um, I'm not a great candidate for a retail showroom because a retail cabinet showroom, you know, you have quotas and you have sales goals and you have mm -hmm. um, all this stuff and it's just not my yeah. cup of tea. I know plenty of people, it is their cup of tea and that's great. That's, you know, you absolutely keep doing it, but I would rather be on the creative end of things. And I would rather, um, you know, if, if the end, if at the end there's a sale of product, that's fantastic. But, yeah. you know, I'd rather, I'd rather be um, just more into the design end of things. And that's, you mm -hmm. know, sounds like that's where you are as well. Definitely. And I feel like if we can just focus on our niche or niche, 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 <laughs> you know, um, I think if we, we can focus on our niche, then we can really excel in that one area and mm -hmm. bring that area forward. Um, I think when you try to juggle too many things at once, you're not able to give like a quality experience, a quality service. I'm not trying to, you know, say that design build firms um, all are trying to juggle too much and firms that um, just strive to do it all that um, they're not, um, you know, a good company at all. But um, I feel like if a few of us individuals in this industry can focus on what we're really good at and just excel in that one area, then it's going to benefit us personally, and it's going to benefit the industry as a whole. And um, what was I going to go with this? Um, I kind of lost my train of thought. Okay. Sometimes I do that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. right. it happens to me all the time. Um, so I, were you were you headed towards you know if you if you try if you do too many things then and you don't focus on one then you don't do any of them that well. Is that kind of where, where you were headed? So if you if you yeah. focus on the one the one. Thing. Yeah, if you can, you know, I'm really artistic and I love being able to show a rendering. And I I realized that in in the last job that I was in that that was just like 10% of my mm. job. And I really wanted to make that like 90% of my job. Yep. You know, the other 10% is running the business. I might have those percentages a little bit wrong, but okay. basically I wanted right. to really focus on just creating those mm. renderings. I also make the selections with the client, even virtually. 
but I wanted to really focus on cutting those selections into that beautiful rendering. And so I feel like that's, that's a market to focus on as a designer. If you want to just focus on drawings, go for it. Even if it's in your downtime. We have seen a lot of that, haven't we, this year, Colin, with other people in the group doing that type of, yeah. So it's, I think it's a great uh, avenue. Yeah. And even, even doing selections is, um, so our, our, our guest will preview our guest next week. Um, um, Justine Wiggins um, has actually turned this into a business, but you can, you can even do product selections remotely. You know, you uh -huh. can get, you can, you can identify, say the top, you know, let's say, let's say a, a cabinet manufacturer has, you know, 72 stains and 32 paints and, you know, all that stuff. Well, you're not selling 72 stains and 32 paints. You're selling two stains and three paints on a regular basis. Uh -huh. So you focus on those. You, you, you know, get a, you know, a, a six inch filler, a three inch eight filler, eight foot long and cut it into chunks, pop those into the mail. And there's your, you know, there's your, your color verification. You didn't have to go anywhere. You can, you know, you can just do yep. all, do stuff like that remotely. Um, you know, so there's definitely certain things that you can, that you can do with, um, with, uh, you know, just being remote. And another thing I'd like to add, um, you know, they say, you know, uh, seeing the samples in person is really important. And so one way that you can do this business virtually and how I plan on doing this business is presenting those samples in person by shipping to their house. Exactly. So that's kind you of can what have that presentation. Yeah, that's what I was alluding yeah. to. Mm -hmm. Because let's face it, seeing them in the showroom doesn't do anybody any good mm -hmm. anyway, because they're seeing it in the showroom lighting. They're seeing it in the showroom, you know, sur with surrounded by the stuff that's in the showroom. They need to see it in their lighting and their space. You know, it's like taking, it's like picking out paint samples and you go and you put, you know, five different colors on your hallway wall, um, you know, and then you figure out which is the best one because you can't do that inside the paint store because that's not oh, your, nope. that's not your space. <laughs> so if you have, and even if it's, you know, even if they're stuck between two or three different samples, you know, what is a, what does a four inch chunk of three inch filler cost you? You know, if, if you never get it back, you never get it back. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you just, you send out, okay, you can't decide between the, you know, the Dover white and the, the um, origami white. Well, I'll send you both. And, right. you know, and then you can, you know, and if you get them back, great. If not, it's not the end of the world. So, um, and you can do that with tile. You can do that with mm -hmm. countertops even, you know, so yeah. it's, it's definitely something that um, next week is going to be not to take away from yours, whatsoever, <laughs> but next week's going to be interesting because you, you'll see the, the, um, what we're talking about put into practice um, and on a fairly large scale. So definitely doable. And, um, you know, you don't have to have a 3,000, 5,000 square foot showroom anymore. It's just not necessary. Yep. Yeah, it's totally changed. Yep. And I also feel like, you know, eventually we're going to get back to normal, but I feel like um, having, you know, for a business to explore the area of virtual designing and, and virtual selection making, everything virtual, um, that that's going to set them apart from their competitors. It's also going to mm -hmm. um, give their client an option. Maybe their client is really busy. Um, mm -hmm. One of the clients that I had, I redesigned her bathroom. She just had a baby and she's starting her own business and she didn't, she does not have the time at all, uh, but she really wants a new bathroom. So my, my business process really worked for her and we didn't even see each other in person once. <laughs> so wow, I was, yeah. And, um, she was able to see the samples. Um, unfortunately she wasn't able to see them in person, but she's, she saw them and she confirmed them and she said, go with them. I, I can't wait to see the 360 and, um, what, what it, what it, you know, ends up looking like. And so, she got the end result and she loves it. And, you know, if she does decide to remodel with all my selections that I, I presented her, um, all she has to do is see the selection list, call the showroom or call me and uh, order the samples to see them before she actually remodels. So, 
Yeah, it's virtual is definitely an area to consider because it gives your clients more options and um, it, it sets you apart. Even though when we go back to normal and, and showrooms become valuable again, um, I feel like uh, we should explore the virtual areas as well. So that's, I just mm -hmm. wanted to add that. Definitely. Okay. Well, do you have any other questions for me or should I uh, show no, some more of my slides? To. Please do. Yeah, let's progress. Okay. So the previous <laughs> slides, uh, I'm pretty sure were just that, you know, I'm from Wisconsin. Um, but this whole idea of virtual remodeling, um, I'm going to go over this slide. Um, just, I just wrote down a few bullet points as to why um, it's beneficial. Uh, you, do you see that slide where it says yep. virtual mm -hmm. remodeling? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So with virtual remodeling, you spend less time making the selections for a contractor. If you're a designer, um, you can show everything through a 3D design. Um, and that is really helpful for the client and the contractor. Um, the contractor gets a good idea, you know, it, it, it can help ease maybe some mistakes that could pot potentially happen by um, seeing everything in the 3D. Um, for the client, it kind of balances an emotional aspect of remodeling. Um, seeing it all in 3D, it gives, that, that, it gives them that sense of confidence that maybe they wouldn't otherwise have. It's very safe. You know, um, we don't really understand this virus completely. And some people are really afraid to leave their homes right now. Um, and so this would be a very safe way to take that aspect of remodeling completely virtually. Um, it's just a fresh and new idea to engage the homeowner. The homeowner of today is looking for fresh and new ideas. And this would be virtual remodeling would be one way to engage them. Um, you can communicate via email and Zoom. I know we all know this. Um, so it is possible to do all of this virtually. Um, so that kind of uh, goes over, um, you know, what I was talking about before. So I'm going to move forward past the timeline of events now. Ooh, it's animated. Thanks. So that's my kitchen. <laughs> Uh, nice. The one on the left. Um, there's a lot of kitchens that look like this. Mm -hmm. um, if you go to realtor.com or any of those real estate um, pages, you'll see a lot of homes that are on the market right now. The, marking, the housing market is really hot right now. There's a lot yeah. of people buying houses. Um, but if you take a close look at some of the kitchens and baths, they look a lot like that. <laughs> so... Or they look a lot Let's like get that. Let's them and renovated. They, or they look a lot like that, and they slapped granite countertops on because the realtor said that said yeah. the granite would sell it faster. And those are usually the kitchens from about 1960s, 1970s. Could go into the yep. 80s, I think. Yeah, I think this is probably this is probably built in the 80s. Mm. So, and there were no rollout trays, and there were no pullouts, and there were no no interior accessories. Nope. So I was able to remodel my own kitchen uh, not too long ago. It took about one and a half months mm. when, with virtual remodeling, of course. Um, you know, I was stuck at home. And so that's why I remodeled my kitchen virtually. Um, yeah, the bullet points kind of go over a little bit more other than um, my kitchen remodel. But um I'm just going to kind of go over that. Um, one of the reasons that I also wanted to start this business was because I wanted to kind of call the shots, so to say. Um, you know, the I wanted to run my own business the way I wanted to run it. So um, redesigning my own kitchen kind of uh, showed me how to do that. Um, all right, so back to uh, the kitchen. Um, you can see how there's quite a transformation. Um, I was able to do not just a refresh on the outside, but you know, 
I could specify different organization um, areas inside the cabinets as well. And so that's one of, one of the things that I specify for people is um, if you need better organization, you can get that uh, through various different companies and products. So um, I would love to have the kitchen on the right. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> um, I really like the lift up cabinets in the pass through. Um, I think that's really a clever use of uh, that area. And then uh, what other types of in interior accessories do you have in the cabinets? Well, I have um, under the sink, I have a pull out waste basket. Mm. Um, there's no real area in my kitchen for a waste basket. So mm. that's one good area to have that. Um, and then what looks like a blind corner cabinet, mm -hmm. I have a swivel base that swivels out mm -hmm. um, where I can keep some of my, um, you know, bigger bowls and things like that. I know you're not seeing all of the kitchen, mm -hmm. um, but those are just two storage features that I've included in my kitchen. Um, those uh, top cabinets with the hinge open, those are really nice. They're really a modern feature. Mm -hmm. um, they're really nice when they have that soft close feature too. Um, some of the older cabinets in the older kitchens don't have a soft close feature, but I have to say um, the soft close feature really does make a good difference. So um, uh, I would include those with my cabinets as well. Um, one of the things I wanted to add too is if you notice the mechanical locations are all the same. So that could show a client, you know, with keeping the cost down on their future remodel, that they can completely transform the look and the function of the kitchen, but also um, maintain the lower cost with keeping mechanicals where they are. So that's kind of why I um, redesigned my kitchen. I, I'm tired of seeing my old one and looks a lot like a lot of the kitchens that you see in some of the older homes. And so there's a lot of, um, I guess, not really demand, but um, a lot of potential for business out there. A lot of people stuck in their homes right now. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm not the only one who wants to redesign kitchens. And I hope that, um, that this inspires you to kind of see a really bad kitchen and what you can turn it into. So I'm gonna to go to the next slide. I really wanna get into the kitchen remodel that I did. Um, but before I get too much into that, I kind of wanna go over my business process if that's okay. Sure. Okay. This is your, so this is my, your thing, so have at okay. it. Okay, thanks. Um, so I start by taking photos and measurements. If the client is not comfortable with me taking the measurements, I ask if they can present the measurements for me. And I ask for the basic measurements. Um, I don't need to have every square inch of the space for, for what I offer. Um, so I ask for photos and measurements and I will visit if they're comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. And then I um, take their kitchen into a concept black and white design. Um, and this is important because um, when they go to showrooms to make selections, it kind of gives the designer at the showroom um, an overall view of the space where they may not have if they didn't have that drawing with them. Um, so after the black and white concept drawing is confirmed with the client, um, I make those selections with them. I present them a standard mood board um, with some ideas for different uh, selections that they could have in their kitchen. Um, after a style consultation that I have with them. Um, and if they're comfortable, I, I meet with them in the showroom to actually make the selections in person. But if they're not comfortable, I'll present everything via Zoom and, um, and or I will send the samples to their home. Um, 
And so after the selection process, then they get their final presentation. Um, they get their final mood board with all the final selections, with the final renderings, and that 360 view, which I present with a VR headset. So they're able to see their new design um, in a whole new and unique way uh, that they may not all otherwise have. So this would be really important for designers um, to see, to show their clients. And I feel like as our, our niche, this could be really something that we take forward in this industry. I hope that makes sense. I know I'm kind of rambling a little bit, no, but- it's, um, it's fine. Um, it makes sense. Um, if I may inter interrupt with just a question. So sure. How, yeah. uh, how and when are payment, how is payment structured with the, with the, the client? Um, so I provide them an estimate before the work's even started. Mm -hmm. um, and that estimate varies depending on the, the size and the complexity of their space. Um, so if they have a small powder bath, I'm not going to put a number out there because it, it could really vary, but it would definitely be, be 500 or less. I guess I did give a number. Yeah. You know, if it's just a small powder bath, it's not going to be as expensive as a 5,000 square foot kitchen or something like that. Um, and the complexity uh, being, you know, maybe it, your kitchen has vaulted ceilings or uh, coffered ceilings um, or weird angles um, that would affect the estimate. So they get to see everything broken down in their estimate before they're charged. And um, they, decide to move forward with the process or not to move forward. Mm -hmm. um, I give them that choice. Um, so then in my five process, process, <laughs> five step process, um, they have, you know, the option to maybe get a refund for whatever reason. Um, I make that an option just because I think it's, it's good business. Um, but they only get a refund for anything that they haven't received yet. Um, but anything that they have received, um, they don't get a refund for. So let's say they're in um, the selection process phase and they say to me, you know, I, I, I have enough ideas, I like a refund. Mm -hmm. I would keep the cost for that concept design and um, some of that selection time. So that's how I work. I give a fee in the beginning um, and they either okay it or they either pay it or they don't. Um, they have the option of a refund in the process. Um, some of the, um, there could be some charges that maybe um, I may be responsible for in the process, like maybe ordering a, a sample or whatever it may be. Um, I present that to them or I just let them know, hey, the sample's going to be $20 or um, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. I get their approval first. And then when the process is over, they get an invoice, a final invoice for that. Okay. Nice. I think that, um, I, I think that you probably um, will, you increase the trust of your potential client simply by offering that money back guarantee mm -hmm. because somebody else that they talk to is not going to do that. Yeah. So I think that's a, that's a, an inbuilt um, closing tool right there, because what do they have to lose? You know, if, if really they, yep. you know, if they have, uh, if they've, if you've gotten to the black and white concepts and, you know, you maybe go through a, a revision or two and they're just not seeing it, not feeling it, then they can get a refund and, you know, of the rest of it where, you know, once you've committed to, once you've committed to, you know, most designers, it's like you know, tough cookies. This is your, this is your, um, you know, this is your design process. So I think that you will actually sell more of them, if that makes mm -hmm. sense, because of that, you know, you're giving people, cause, and I, and I bet you, I bet you dollars to donuts that you never, you never have to give a, a refund. That's what we hope for. Yeah. I hope this is, inspires other designers to maybe consider that. I feel like it's just really good business. Um, but you know, know what you're worth. That's one of the reasons I, I, um, have that fee in the beginning. I, I let them know, Hey, this is going to cost X amount of dollars. 
and um, you know it's going to it's going to take X amount of time. If it's over that X amount of time, you won't be charged for it. I know a lot of times we can spend you know ten to twenty hours on a project, and it ends up being forty, <laughs> maybe more for some projects. Mm -hmm. um, and so each designer works a little differently. Um, but the way I think good business would be to go about is have that fee in the beginning and keep everything very transparent. Yeah, transparency is so important with customers. I think they yep. feel more comfortable when you're transparent. One of the things yep. I wanted to ask about was uh, what do your VR goggles look like? I've never used them. Oh, I'll show them. I have them right here. Is this hilarious? <laughs> How many years yeah. have I been doing 2020, Colin, and I have never used VR goggles? Oh, same here. I mean, you know, it's, uh, it, it, and it's funny, just a, just a quick aside. <laughs> I've said this to, to a number of people so far, and, my, and I never said it to my wife. And my wife's like, 2020 is like gaming to you. I said, yeah, it is. It's <laughs> yeah, like it some is. people play Fortnite. Some yeah. people play Call we of play Duty. We play 2020. I play 2020. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. my, uh, anyway, I'm sorry. Continue. That's her fun. So no, tell us about fine. it. Tell us how the goggles work, because I've never, I've never put them on. That's I really amazing. don't know. Yeah. What, I wouldn't know what to do with them. So you open the flap. Mm -hmm. So it starts out like this. There's a Velcro at the top. Mm -hmm. You just open that flap. Oh, okay. And there's instructions there. Um, they're very simple instructions, but sometimes something simple mm -hmm. like this can, if you're not familiar with it, can seem confusing. So. Right. Basically what you want to do, you take your phone okay, and you want to place your phone with, you got to make sure you have uh, the link on your phone where oh. you're seeing the two screens side by side. Side I would by side. never be able to do this. <laughs> it, I'm going to, I plan on having a, um, a detailed um, instruction list on how to do this because it can seem very confusing at first. Yeah, yeah. Basically you want to you want to open your link and you want to click where it gives you the option of VR headset. Okay. And then it'll turn into two screens. Once it's at two screens, you want to place your phone in the 360. Oh. Like oh, that. I had yeah. no idea. Um, so this is your camera. Let's make sure. Oh, I have that's the flap. That's it. I have that's the you have to take the flap out okay and then place your phone you want to make sure that you see the the two circles so you can see the image in okay. your phone and then you take this flap your phone's there you take this flap and you fold it under because there's a velcro on the side uh -huh. on each side and each 360 headset is going to be a little different i like this okay. one because it's very simple and very easy to use okay um, or, you know, it's simpler than some of the, the ones that I saw that um, you actually have to assemble it yourself, which I was like, no, I'm not going to order that for my clients. Um, and then the top flap there, okay. you just make sure that that belt grows at the top. And so what it looks like is this, your phone is in the side. Mm -hmm. And then that's the part you look through. And that's the top part. You press this button. Um and it'll actually give you different features with whatever link you have open. You can click on like move image or just image, zoom in or zoom out or something like that. Um, so I don't need glasses to see close up. I need glasses uh -huh. to see far away. But if you can't see, if you need glasses to see close up, you have to keep your glasses on. Oh, okay. Um, so but I recommend take your glasses off and then you just hold the headset up to your head like this uh -huh. and you look around, you should be able to see your kitchen in 360 degrees. That's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it does work. It's, it's, um, I've, I've used it. I've used it with other people's heads. Have you used and, it? And 2020 um, at, at KBiz will have that there for you to try. Uh, they even have a quick plug for 2020. They even have a free VR headset if you order now. And no, oh, yeah. that's right. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so yeah, it's it's pretty neat. now. Now, um, Becky, I know that that some of the older ones, 
don't take some of the larger format phones that are out there now are you are the one that you're using does it take the larger phones like the like a, like you couldn't do like a one of the max versions of the iphone um yeah the, the larger um samsung's this one takes all sizes of uh headset uh this headset takes all sizes of phones nice. okay i um when i got this phone it's the largest at the time i believe it's the um it's the iphone 8 plus 8 plus yeah plus? Yeah. Okay. yeah 8 plus is pretty big yeah uh it's physically a big phone yeah i got it i think two years ago hmm. i don't know if they make bigger phones but the iphone 8 plus is pretty big and yeah. you just gotta it's make sure big. that it's kind of the screen part is even with the circles or you know the holes in the goggle set so that you can see the screen and it should work. You just kind of make sure that it's even. Um, and you can always adjust it too. You know, yeah. with um, any new technology, use your creativity. Think outside the box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You so know, don't as, think too inside the box. Yeah. So as you do this, just, just a word of advice, there are companies out there that will, there are promo companies that will actually take these cardboard ones and put your graphics on it. Your yeah. logo and all that stuff and what you could do is make a video showing oh, how to do cool. it right and put a qr code on the outside of it so that all they have to do is go with their qr code with the phone they can watch the video of how to use it and then you know what i mean so anyway that's, yeah, a, that's, great, one feature. that's a great idea i actually don't do that yet but you gave me a good idea colin thanks yeah he's got a lot of it. <laughs> i i have i have tons of idea and tons of ideas, ideas. And no time and no money so <laughs> <laughs> so you know Knock on unfortunately wood. some of these some of these ideas you know take more usually they take more time than, than money but anyway so you yeah. know it's it's something new that i think that is definitely going to flourish and maybe not this industry but um maybe this industry <laughs> so it's an area that is definitely um it's technology that's ever evolving and I think that it is going to um, take hold in this industry. Is what I'm trying to say. I think yeah. I'm having some iPod issues. I, I think I can still hear. We can hear oh. you. Oh, yeah, we can hear you. I just realized. See, this is technology for you. Oh my gosh! So I have the uh, AirPods. Yeah. The the AirPods Pro, mm -hmm. and I I uh, I pressed on it. When you press on it, it's supposed to take out sound. Oh yeah. Kind of cool. When I pressed on it, it just did my slide. Oh, <laughs> I, I don't know how it did that. I don't know how it did that. That is. Can so you imagine? Funny. It's all changing. Are you on it? a Mac? No, I'm on a um, Microsoft PC? Word PC. Yeah. 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 Okay. Anyway, keep going. So I guess I'm at my next slide already because I just <laughs> adjusted my head bud thing, ear bud thing. Um, I, I call these things weird names. I don't call them their actual name. Um, so yeah, I'm a millennial, uh, but I'm still new yeah. to technology because it's changing so much. Yeah, um, no, so what, I can't what? imagine what it's like to be not a millennial and older. So hopefully I help it's, you. Um, it's wonderful. It's, it's wonderful. <laughs> Technology's moving so fast, we can't keep up, can we? I can't. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm a I'm a Gen Xer who just has always loved technology, so I'm I'm probably and I think I think my generation, um, you know, I, I think you know Karen's a boomer. So, yeah, I'm a boomer. Um, I had to go yeah. kicking and screaming yeah. into technology. <laughs> um, I always loved technology. Like I have I had a I had a Commodore 64. That was my first. That was my first computer, but I never enjoyed. It. I never got into programming. It was always the user end of things. I enjoyed using it. I never wanted to get into programming, so I was always like. But anyway, I keep making it about me. Darn it, Becky! You. <laughs> no, this is. A, um, <laughs> you know, I I don't know if we're on a time crunch or anything. I would like to uh, touch a little bit on the kitchen remodel that I did, but if you have anything to add, by all means, I. This is a, a great conversation. So yeah, we're we're a bunch That's of talkers. It is. <laughs> it is. It's a conversation. Yep. We love right, kitchens. So take it away. Kim's kitchen. No drum roll, but you see the slides, I hope. 
These are all the before pictures. Do you see? Yes. Yep. Do you see the before? We okay. Yep. So these are the before pictures. You can see that she had a very small dining area uh, with patio doors. Um, kind of a bit of clutter. Um, this one cabinet was organized pretty well, um, but she wanted better organization. She had very little drawers in her kitchen. Here she had um, between the stove and the dishwasher. It's very close together. Um, and kind of older appliances as well. Um, she was using um, a pantry space that had two different doors that were two separate rooms. Um, and they, it was kind of mixed match different of different things. And then um, this is uh, the far right, bottom right picture is uh, the electrical switches behind the microwave. Um, this kind of shows the type of pictures that I would ask a client for. I want to see inside cabinetry. Um, I want to see every angle of the room. And if you have any light switches or outlets, I want to see that as well. Um, and so that, that kind of shows, you know, some of the photos that I would ask for. Uh, below, you see the black and white line drawing that I present with every design, the existing layout. This is her existing layout with the before pictures. Now, if I move on, you'll see the concept with the video. I'm gonna pause it though, so I can talk a little bit about it. Uh, basically what I did, actually I'm gonna play the video so you can see a better view, hopefully of um, by the dishwasher. Awesome. Thanks. Well, I'm sitting in it, so, you know. It does bring it to life. <laughs> it awesome I forgot. I'm That's sitting true. in the banquet. Yeah, Colin's uh, backdrop is the actual kitchen. Yeah. Um, so what I wanted to do is give her some drawers. I gave her four drawers in between the uh, stove and the dishwasher and four drawers to the left of the refrigerator. Um, I pulled the refrigerator out a little bit. And the peninsula out to the left by about 15 inches. Um, we explored the idea of maybe an island, but um, based on the overall dimensions of her kitchen, she didn't have enough space. Mm -hmm. We concluded that the um, the depth of her island would end up being only eight inches. <laughs> so it's not like even a table, uh, it, it's just not enough space. So what I presented to her was this concept of um, let's move out the peninsula a little bit and then add you like, uh, you know, lower seating, like a breakfast nook kind of area. Mm -hmm. um, so that all allows for a little bit more seating. She could comfortably fit uh, three people on each side before she can only have four people sitting at her dining table. Now she can have six on the bench seating and then she could pull up maybe two chairs on the other side for a total of eight people uh, that was one of the things that she wanted she wanted to be able to have better uh, she wanted more seating for her family and friends and she wanted uh, better storage and then the rest was um, you know just the you know the aesthetic of the space her style um so I'm gonna play the video again. I kind of went over the concept, newer appliances. Oh, I, I actually missed something. Oh, so I went to the end slide. Uh, I wanna share one more thing. Oh. <laughs> oh, the barn door. Yeah. Yeah. I we took didn't both. See, we didn't see the barn door yet. Yep. Um, that was going to work out better. She thought of maybe a sliding door, but with, uh, or pocket door. Pocket doors don't work well if you have um, any mechanical in that drywall. Nope. Um, the barn door is great because it, it, it doesn't affect that drywall behind it at all. Um, but basically, I, I, um, took those two small little pantry rooms and made it to one large room. So that's so like a that is, pantry, right? Nice. That is yeah. Amazing. She wanted to use it for her utility room though. Mm. So for her pantry items, she has 
two uh, pull out cabinets on either side of the microwave um, for cans and spices and things like that. Um, and then for her slow cookers and uh, she has an instant pot um, and anything utility related, she has that um, in that utility room behind the barn door. Nice. So her organization is a lot, lot better. Um, is there anything else I can add on this? Do you have any questions about it? So that that living room shot. Is yeah, that that's photo, yeah. That yeah. A photo of her living room that you put on yeah. The scenery. Yeah. That's I awesome. that's not her real living room though. Oh, okay. I gave her a brand new couch. Oh, oh nice. it that looks great nice though. You. <laughs> Don't you think yeah. that looks when we're doing drawings? I think that looks great to add. Yeah. If we can even take a photo of the other room or put in um, their room. And I did that on a job and it just makes it so nice. And the yeah. customers love it. Yeah, and it completes yep. it. it. It really visually completes the whole thing. So anytime yeah. you can incorporate scenery into, and sometimes it just needs to be a couple of blank walls, just as long as it's showing, you know, something, just a hallway and then have it just dead end somewhere mm -hmm. else. So it's not, you know, yep. so you're not, it's not seeing that white background outside of that. Yep. You know, that's all you'd see there. Otherwise it would be that white, that white background that you have um, and uh, this just lends to the realism yeah and i think that's one of the things that you've been really big about con teaching is the realism in the 2020 pub group you know uh, when you did the class and you had lights camera action i mean it's so important the backdrops we use and how you put the texture onto the walls yeah. this just makes the kitchen very warm inviting and it gives it that tone yeah so is this did this get did this get done? Is this is this actually um, completed now or? Only a virtual remodel. Okay. Right now, so this, right, this was so this just yeah. This was just recently done. This virtual oh, okay. remodel was just done um, like two weeks ago. Hmm. Um, but everything is um, you know specified, not just the pretty drawings, but I also have a specification sheet um, that a contractor would use mm -hmm. um, for the appliances. Uh, for the tile, for the wall panels, the countertop, uh, the plumbing fixture. Yeah. Um, not so much cabinetry though, because um, right now I don't have a cabinetry manufacturer that I'm working with. Even though behind me I do have a plaque. You should. That. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I very do. interested in Dura maybe, Supreme. Maybe we can hook you up. <laughs> Maybe I'm open to well, new opportunities. One of the one of the things that I think has come up, I think it was happening before COVID, but I think COVID um, accelerated it, is um, a lot more manufacturers are are eliminating um, the the high barrier of entry for becoming yeah. a dealer. You know, it used to be that you had to have a a ten foot display, and you had to have their complete selection center, and you had to commit to three hundred thousand dollars or fifty thousand right. dollars or or whatever of sales a year. Uh -oh. uh, now many of them are saying, "Yeah, just samples. All you gotta have is samples, and you know, a way to a way to show the product to people." There, there. A lot of the manufacturers are lowering the barrier to entry for for being a dealer, and that's huge. Can you guys for... hear me? Yes. Yes. Yep. Yes, you... we can hear you. <laughs> yeah. Did you did you just miss all the everything I just said? <laughs> uh oh, I don't think she can hear us. Testing. That's okay. Testing, testing. She'll come back. <laughs> we lost your screen. We have the blue she, screen. I think she minimized it. Oh, so. okay. Yeah, I think she's, don't, Becky, don't panic. Don't panic. <laughs> Happens to us all the time. You're back. Okay. Can you hear us? Um, you know what? I'm going to shoot her a quick Facebook message. Thank gosh, thank heavens for messenger, huh? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Are you doing it too? No, I'm not. I'm I'm letting you handle that. You're the technical wizard. Having trouble hearing. See, I knew that that was uh, kind of. Yeah. Funny. Where's your oh. fiance? Bring him back. <laughs> Sorry, folks, we're experiencing technical difficulties again. Please stand by.
<laughs> um, wonder if her AirPods died. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. Although she's got the Pro, so those should last. I find that my AirPods only last about uh, 45 minutes of, co of continuous use. Okay, all you techie guys. What is an AirPod? <laughs> so AirPods are um, specifically Apple, Apple branded wireless earbuds. So oh, okay. you, have a, you, you have an iPhone, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you know that, you know, the, you know, the, the headphones that come with it, yeah. how they're specifically yeah. shaped for left and right. Yeah. Picture those without cords. Oh, I'd be afraid to use it. That's an AirPod. Yeah. Um, I'd pick up everything. Case. Actually, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop her sharing for now, just so that we can chat. Um, so I don't know if you can see no because it's white because yeah I can't see it with the white but it's a it's an Apple product yeah. and then it goes into your go. ears. I just put my hand behind it. Oh okay. See, it's a, this is a case. Okay. And they live inside the they live inside. Oh the okay. Case so that uh, yeah and the, they charge in here and the case, then you charge the case. Ah clever. So the uh, there she is. Can you hear us? I got so many things to charge already. It's like one more thing. Can you hear us? I don't know if you can hear me, but um, yes. I don't know what's going on. We can hear you. My we can hear you. Or my AirPods. You can change to. Um, <laughs> can you speak to me in the chat? Yep. Yep. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, so I bought the iPad Pro, but I really haven't found out all the unique things it'll do, Colin. But, yeah. you know, I guess all I need to do now is get some some uh, Apple Buds, the uh, earbuds. AirPods, AirPods. Yeah, AirPods. Well, AirPods. you got to help me with the language, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my 12-year-old my daughter, almost 13, yells at us when we say it wrong. Oh, does she? <laughs> Yeah. I don't have any kids around, so yeah. you know, I haven't seen them yet. Right. One more thing I have to buy. Here's the kitties. Oh, there's a the kitty. <laughs> came to visit. Can you hear us yet, Becky? <laughs> it's not. I know I'm on mute. It's because you have it through the you. Yeti. <laughs> Your AirPods aren't hooked up to the computer for some reason. Aha. That'll that'll do it. You can't you can't put your sound through the her. Yeti. Yeah, they can't hear us. It's, yeah. It's pointless. <laughs> yeah. It's it's it is interesting how doing everything online and virtual, we do run into these technical difficulties. You, you don't have your AirPods on. He I think that he mentioned that they were, might have been dead. Oh. How about can you hear us now? I can hear you guys. Yay, Yay. I don't know wow. what just happened. <laughs> I don't know what you were trying to explain. I thought maybe they did die, and what? then I, I placed them in here. Um, I have one in the cassette, and then I have one yeah. in my there ear. There you go. Yep. OK, technology we're back. To, oh, my gosh, yeah. technology. We're, we're back. Technolo know, technical stuff. difficulties over. Yeah. OK. Um, thank you, so, James. You're welcome. You can also thank my fiance for help. Yeah, yeah we need him. <laughs> What's his name? What's his James. Name? James. Thank you, James. James. <laughs> says, thank you. This is my IT Thank department, you, guys. <laughs> he certainly That's is. Great. Funny, he looks a lot like your, your fiance. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see my cat? Yes, of course. Yeah, we saw the cat. Yeah. yeah. Which so one is that? That was Stormy, and Stormy got into the room when I opened the door. And ah. I thought, why not introduce Stormy Absolutely. to the group? So, okay, what so. What are we talking yeah. about? Um, we were talking about the kitchen and then that background with the couch. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We were talking about oh, no, that. oh, you were telling, you were telling me that it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, done, done, done yet. It was still just virtual. Right. That just virtual. virtual um, yeah. do you, do you see the screen? No, I stopped your, screen, your screen sharing so that we could just, I yeah, but we can, we can actually screen. see the kitchen and Colin's screen. That's and true. It's his background. So, <laughs> so it works perfect. <laughs> So I just want to say that um, 
there's probably a, a few different ways that you can have that background. Um, what I have is um, uh, like a window and I took the frame out and I put a scenery in that window. Okay. Yeah, that works. But you could also just have a blank wall. You can extend or the flooring would extend with the wall. Mm -hmm. um, or you could put objects there too. Yeah. The only might look even more lifelike. The only thing I, the only thing I point out with objects, if you're going to, uh, if you're going to put like a, um, a scenery backdrop on it or something, mm. um, things like objects, things like walls, they repeat patterns. Mm. So what you'll more likely happen is you'll, you'll have like a half, a, a half, you know, it'll be reversed. Like you'll have the top and the bottom and the bottom will be on the top. Um, you have to use a scenery from the, from the, um, from the room catalog, or, um, there's a few other things. There's, um, uh, in the, in the underground catalog, there's something called art seven. There are a couple in the cloud. There's a couple of movie posters that those, those will just scale your, your background with it. So there are a few things that you can, but scenery is, scenery is best because it actually lets the sunlight come through so that when you're, when you ha are using sunlight, it comes, it, it comes through the scenery um, where other things won't allow the, the light to come through. So that's where scenery is. So been, uh, didn't that come out this past year in scenery yeah, option? It's been, for, it's been out for a few years, I think. Has it been? Okay. Yeah. It's just 2020, you know, um, I love you guys, but they're really bad at documenting new features. Mm. Um, you know, they, they all of a sudden it's like, surprise, there's the Omni light. And it's like, how long has it been out? <laughs> oh, I don't know, six months. I have yeah, failed them a couple times with some suggestions. Yeah. yeah. We were so excited when the Omni light was there, weren't we? Yeah, they, they, they have to let people know that this stuff exists. Um, but anyway, so, so where do you go from here? So it, oh, we were talking about being a dealer too. So um, there are a number of, uh, of dealers, uh, sorry, a number of manufacturers that, you know, are, I think the larger companies like, you know, master brand, the, the, the big uh -huh. and, and some of the even larger com uh, mid-sized companies like Dura Supreme and folks like that are still hesitant to deal with smaller dealers. Like I know that I, I know uh, somebody that I, I do some freelance designing for. Um, he is a tiny little dealer and he has to, he's, he's not set up with a credit account yet. He has to pay a hundred percent up front before they leave, uh -huh. before they even process the order. Yeah. Um, well, you know that about master brand. Yeah. It's, it's um, all master brand is like that, but that's not the case with most other companies. You know, you need to have, be able to have cash flow when you're, when you're, you know, doing a project. So most other companies, and I just evaluated too, I'm actually going to become a dealer for one of them very soon. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, one of them is 50% down with the balance just prior to shipping. The other is 50% down with the balance at delivery. So, you know, you can, you, can, nice you can set that expect <laughs> expectation with your client. You don't have to have, you know, twelve fifteen thousand $15,000 sitting in the bank to pay for, you know, in addition to their deposit, to pay for their, to pay for the order, um, you can, you can cash flow a lot better. So, um, well, one of the things I think about that too, is the fact that like, uh, I just opened with diamond, right? Mm -hmm. So when I did that, our master brands, I don't have, they will not take your credit card history. If they took that. I'd be great. Yeah. Because you know, it's, it's super. Nope, they need so to you them. have to have credit built in your company with other vendors for them to look at and then they'll approve you and they'll put you on a credit type situation. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise trade. it is cash up front. Yeah. Yeah. Trade references, but, but that's not the norm. The hundred percent up front is not the norm and a hundred percent up front is not, is not viable for the small. Dealer. It's hard for a small business. You know, you'd have to, then you have to have, you know, for your first order, you have to have 15, $20,000 saved and set aside. No. Oh, yeah. Most people yeah. can't do that. You know, yeah. it's just, and it's a, it's a, it's a sad fact of life, but you know, most of us have no savings. Mm -hmm. you know, we have no, we have no, no cushion and that's bad, but, um, but also, you know, so anyway, so that's, uh, so Becky, was there anything else that you, uh, that you wanted to add? Um, I guess, I think you started, uh, to ask, you know, what would the client do after the, getting the virtual remodel? Where would they go from there? Yeah. I think that'd be a good thing to kind of talk sure. about. Yep. Um, so what my, you know, what my clients would do is um, they would have their choice of different contractors they could work with. 
Um, there's a few contractors that I could recommend for them. Um, and they would have that selection sheet with them, like I mentioned before. Um, and so they would take that selection sheet to the contractor and just verify that it can be built or remodeled. Um, and if they, you know, for any reasons it, it can't be built, um, they can come back to me and, um, you know, make any changes to that design. And um, there's a one time or a few different changes for a few different things I have outlined in my website uh, that I'll make those changes. Um, but it's very seldom that a concept can't be built because I work really hard to follow NKBA guidelines and um, to keep, you know, if the, the customer is trying to keep costs low, I try to keep mechanicals where they are. Um, so that um, kind of changes changes like not just the cost, but uh, the complexity of a remodel. Um, and I would get involved with the contractor if need be. I would just be charged an hourly rate after that for my time. Um, so I haven't really explored um, actually experiencing that. You know, if either of my two clients actually remodel, it's gonna be something new for me, um, but I feel I'm very prepared on what I'm going to do and how I'm going to go about working with them when it gets to that point. So a lot of it kind of goes on um, the responsibility of the contractor, but as far as the design, the selections, um, my time, um, anything that the contractor would need to know um, or the client, they can come to me. Um, at this time, I'm not showing uh, dimensions in my drawings but that is something I'm looking forward to changing in the soon future. Just at this time, I only show uh, the layout, the floor plans, the elevations, the perspectives um, without dimensions. Um, but in the software, I do look at you know, the measurements and follow the NKBA guidelines. So that was kind of a long uh, answer, but I hope that I explained that well. Yeah, it definitely. Um, you know, one of the things that that you're you're on your way to doing, and which is which is essential for the the one person business, is systems. You have to have systems uh -huh. in place, and you know mm -hmm. those forms that that the um, the you know an intake form and a uh, specifications form and all that stuff um, is so crucial for um, for you to to keep things streamlined because otherwise, you know you're you're might be forgetting things and there's no checks and balances when there's just you. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, you know, it's, uh, it's systems or everything. Yep. I also have a five-step process that I think is going to be very successful. Um, not just, you know, it wasn't just successful for the two clients that I worked on already. Um, but I think it's going to keep me very organized along the whole process. That's great. It's very important to have that process. For sure. Yep. All right. Well, um, Karen, did you have anything anything else you wanted to ask? No, I think it's uh, it's really interesting because it's something I haven't ventured into um, using the AR goggles. So at this point, I'm going to have to do that, aren't I? <laughs> yeah. I you mean, have 2020, just... right, Karen? Uh, yeah. Do I have 2020, Colin? <laughs> oh, yes, you do. Yeah. I've been doing 2020 for yes. what 20, 23, oh, yeah. 24 years. <laughs> So I just wanted to get <laughs> yeah, all you need. All you need is one of those, one of those, um, all you need is one of those goggles and the cardboard ones work just fine. And then, yep. um, that's all you need. You already know how to do it. Uh, yeah. We'll get me panel. set up. We'll you have to get me set up. Panel. When you send, when you send a 360 panel to, to, um, a mobile device, it uh -huh. automatically gives you the opportunity to do a stereoscopic image. And that's what that. creates the 3d. Oh, okay. So, yep. So you're already doing it. Any any panel that you've ever done. I do not you do panels. It. Well, you, you need to stop. <laughs> it's a whole new experience. I um, and, and activates my vertigo. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> it's my like client. A, it's like I'm on a roller coaster. My <laughs> With my client Kim, who I did the kitchen for, uh, she didn't think that she needed the headset, mm -hmm. but I included it anyway because I just wanted her to experience that visualization oh yeah the ceiling well, walls you know, they're, just moving around in the room there and it's really a difference they're as little as seven bucks on amazon 
you know, they, mm-hmm. they really, you know, I mean, you can, you can, you know, There's figure out types. a couple test a couple of different ones, you know, somewhere between, you know, between eight and 12 bucks a piece. And if you have a prime, if you have a prime account, you can order it prime and send it directly to their house and you don't even yep. have to touch it, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's completely it's virtual. Neat. And it's, you know, and you can, and it's easy enough to, when you're charging, you know, hundreds of dollars for something, it's easy enough to just include that in there as a, yeah. as a yeah. bonus, you know, and then as you, as you grow and as you um, do more and more, you can have somebody print five or, or 10, you know, with your logo on them and you keep them and you stick them in the mail and send them to somebody and, you know, along with the samples, It'd be great, you know, great time to do, you know, you have like one of those, one of those, um, uh, have you ever seen the postal service boxes? They're like this big, oh, yeah. and they're like this long. Yeah. And you just literally peel a couple of things to stick it together. You throw your samples in there. You can print the stuff. You can print it right off of the Postal Service website. You pop on your label um, with Great your, idea. your VR goggles. And, and yeah. there's, there's a complete care package for them. Yeah. You know, have a couple of yep. things that you, that you keep printed, you know, that go along with it. And, uh, you know, it's just, a, it's just a really neat, really neat thing to be able to provide people. Yep, I uh, know a company that actually does that already. It was, it was one of the showrooms that I've been to and they're including mm-hmm. something like that already. I definitely think it's something that um, is going to take its hold in this industry, so to speak. You know, it's, it's going to be apparent. Um, it's one of those things where you should at least learn about it um, and become familiar with it. So not just for your company, but for the clients. Mm-hmm. You know, the homeowner today they're exposed to so much HGTV. It's crazy, (laughs) you know? So to give them some kind of experience similar to what they're seeing in HGTV or close to it, you should always strive to get close to what they're expecting. And I think the customer today is kind of expecting what they're seeing in HGTV. And I also want to mention the show. I have to mention this show. Um, it's, I, I have it on Hulu. It's called, um, your home made perfect. Your home made perfect. I definitely recommend looking it up. That is something that Modern Virtual Designs, my business, um, is going to hope to strive for in the future is a complete walkthrough through an entire house, not just your kitchen or bath. Someday I hope to get there and I'm working on it. Yeah. Well, there are tools out there that you can actually string multiple panels together. Uh-huh. You create a hot yep. spot. I think I've seen that. I've already explored the that. One. Yeah. And the one that's on that I saw it on your Facebook page. Um, you have that, that one where you have the hot spots with the products, which is another great thing to do. Get yourself yeah. a, get yourself a build.com affiliate. Um, you know, get into the build.com affiliate program. You recommend those things. You send people the links, they click the link, they buy it. You get 10%. Uh-huh. It's like, it's yep. and build.com does everything. So, um, you know, that's another thing. And one of the future guests we're going to have on, um, uh, I haven't asked her yet, but I'm sure she will do it. Um, I'm talking about Jenna in case you're wondering. Oh, that's um, fine. Um, so I actually, are you familiar with the e-design tribe? Me? Yeah. I just joined. A, thanks yeah. to Karen. I joined her. I sent her a link. I said, so, you got to go virtual. Okay. Yeah. You're so, in virtual. So, so. so Jenna Gaidusek, the, um, the, the founder of the e-design tribe, um, that's a lot of what she does through the design tribe is they do uh-huh. um, affiliate programs, affiliate links, and um, you can link your, and they have their own tool. And we'll probably talk about that at some future point. They have their own tool where you can create panos and seven, what they call seven twenties, which is basically uh-huh. just two, three sixties linked together. And you can just click back and forth between them. Um, and then you have make clickable links and people buy that product, buy that chair, buy that end table, buy that, you know, uh, whatever. And you get, you get a commission on it and you don't have to touch a thing. So that's something that we're going to get into in, in a future um, episode with, uh, with Jenna and probably other members of the e-design tribe. Um, and then next week, we're going to kind of see something that's really um, unique and different. We're talking about that, you know, samples and things like that. And, and um, uh, Justine has, has done that um, to, to um, a new level. So tune in next week. Um, so, for now, I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna wrap up. Becky, thank you so much. Thank um, you, Becky. Thank you for having me here. Sorry, you're, you sound like you, you sound like you have allergy head. So this probably wasn't easy. 
to do. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> Cause trust me, I'm, I've been there. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, we're in, we're in the Northeast and we're usually uh, in the forties, fifties right yeah. now. And it's, and it's yeah. 70 outside and it's super humid. So it's like really, you know, it's, it's really tough. But, uh, but anyway, if you for, for yeah. doing this, take though, care of you know, yourselves out yeah. there. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah, drink you your too. tea, um, yeah. do that good stuff. Make chick homemade chicken noodle soup. I just did yeah. that recently really yeah. helps. Yep. Do matzo all you ball, can to stay safe and healthy too. out there. Yeah. Matzo ball soup is very good too. Um, matzo ball? Right. I've never matzo, heard of matzo ball soup. Matzo. Yeah. M-A-T-Z, <laughs> M-A-T-Z-O. It's a, it's actually, um, it's a Jewish food. It's a kosher food and it's, um, it's, uh, they're like little dough balls in a chicken based broth and it's supposed to be good for what ails you. But anyway, thank you, Becky. And um, oh, okay. we will see you yeah. around the, uh, the Facebook group. Don't go anywhere. I'm just going to stop the stream and we'll just chat for a couple more minutes. So bye Thanks, everybody. Becky. Facebook right. land. We'll, uh, we'll see you soon.